if I have one simple task to do, well, I have a lot of free time, don't I? If I have 50 tasks to do, I don't have free time. I need a cook to help me make food. I need a person that cleans my dishes and does this and that for me. I need more rooms because I have 10, 15 meetings at the same time. I need more because I have more responsibilities, which means I need to free up my time. But in a healthy system, everybody has what they need and everybody has the opportunity to grow in a position of responsibility, which means power, which means serving the intent at a greater capacity. When humans are not, humanity is obsessed with external symbols because these external symbols is what make people realize that you have more value than them. I have the most beautiful girl on my arm and I have the most fancy car and I have a life that you can only watch in movies. Which means, quite obviously, I'm superior to you in every way, shape and form. I need these symbols to establish my dominion over you. When you're in a healthy system, you're, you don't attribute to these external markers any value besides, well, I have a, I, my house has more space because I have to manage more things and have more people that I deal with, so I need more space. You do not worship me because I have a, a big house. You can love me and respect me because I'm in service and I serve and I've been serving and I will continue to serve with my life. And you know that and you can feel that because the life of the whole is always improving. But you, we do not evaluate a person by the things that they have. They have the things that they need in order to be able to fulfill their function in an optimal level. The purpose of a caris, let's say I have a, that takes me from here to there, it's like, well, I'm, I'm a busy individual. When I'm in my somewhere, I'm like, well, I, I, let's say I have to go from here to there and it takes 40 minutes. Well, I, I have work to do. So if I have to drive myself, I've just wasted an hour and a half that I can be more useful to you. So why don't we find a person who's good at driving and is able to give you that service to take you from here to there safely, effectively, without stress, so that I can be of more service to you? Who's going to say no to that? I can do more for you. So now, if you look at it from the outside, look at him, I wish I was like him, he has a driver. He's important. And so on and so forth. So when you grasp that, this, these are just basic examples to give you perspective. Like, but in, when you're plugged into a life power and you're being sustained by it, external markers lose their value. It just becomes, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's a practical. It's like, well, I need this to make me more efficient to serve the whole. So yeah, it seems I have more than you, but that's because I need that to do my job. And if you need more, to do more your job so that you can be of more service, you'll automatically be a, a, given those things because we're, everyone's looking to expand in their capacity to be of service. There's no cap unless you, for whatever reason, cannot or will not. And that means technically you're diseased. And then there will be a medical system to help you gain the capacity to continue to grow, even if it's slow, but you can continue to grow, which means you're healthy, which is what I've called health building since the start of this series. So you grow in health, which means in your capacity to be of service, which means there's no cap. It, you, you, your rhythm may be slower for whatever reason. Ah, well, that's a whole other way of looking at things. And it seems like a, an ideal life or an idealized life. This is not possible. You cannot fake this. You cannot artificially create this, which is what some institutions try to do. This will never work. I'm speaking from an, a, a, I don't want to say an ideal world, because I don't believe it's in an ideal world. I'm like, in an alignment, that's how things work. In disalignment, external markers of success, external markers of responsibility, of equal power, are worshipped. External markers of responsibility equals power are worshipped, and you use this to, right? If you have all this, uh, I've had a chance to travel, and as I was getting older, I started to dislike traveling. As I started to become more sober, I started to feel like my traveling is on the back of other people. I don't feel very comfortable with this. Where I'm living now like a king, it's like, well, that person doesn't have anything. And I understand that me spending money is giving them a job and whatnot. I'm, I don't feel comfortable like this because I don't, I am not, I don't feel like I'm a king, nor do I feel like I'm special. I don't like people kissing my ass because they want tip. But the whole dynamic 
is diseased. Well, that's our modern world. You have the, the people at the bottom who suck, oh, you're so amazing. It's designed that way because these external markers of success are the things that, give, that have value. I have a car, I'm special. I command people, I'm special. It's not, I'm actually in service. It's not, I'm actually good at serving humanity and serving the whole. No, it's, I'm in that position. I'm superior to you. That I'm serving or not serving is irrelevant. I'm the President of the United States. With all due respect, you know, well, I'm not sure that you care about the well-being of others. I don't want to judge. I see, I'm like, well, yeah, but he has an external status symbol. I'm the President. I have power and I have all of this on my command. I can destroy and annihilate worlds. Everybody, wow, that's so amazing. Maybe not today anymore, but once upon a time. This is a star, he's so important. Everywhere he goes, he's treated, he has limos, he has this, he has that, he has 15 houses, all these cars. He's amazing and I have nothing. Was that really the reality? Is that person serving? We would have to define service. Service is very easy to define. Is service is service of life. I can assure you that the person who's got more than you in the day, today's day and age is serving something, but he's serving disease, whatever disease is. And I'm not saying this is evil. Disease, that means he's serving the agency of disease. That's why he gets all these perks. The more they serve the, the agenda, the more they will get all these material things so that you worship them. But they're not in the service of life, so we cannot confuse. That's why I, I'm taking the time to, tr to the best of my capacity, and I hope I'm doing a decent job. It's like there's two systems. One of which today is dormant, and the one, the other one's taking all the space, but it doesn't change the fact that the other exists. Let's say Elvis Presley. So Elvis Presley has sold more albums than anybody else. So why is he miserable? Would, would, shouldn't that mean that if we took this and interpreted it, doesn't that mean he's amazing? And that means he has power and that means he's in service? Wait, but he's the most miserable. Why? Because there, there's no real life. He's not connected to life and is not in service of life, helping others connect to that life themselves so that they can grow. He's there to take something in the form of entertainment. This is not a disrespect to Elvis. I'm just saying that's the game. So the, the scarcity is eternal. I just suck and suck and suck. In return, they expect something from me. And no matter how much I give, it's never enough. No matter how much I put out, it's never enough. And in an instant, it can all disappear. They can hate me. Well, very few people think of the person who's in that position, the stress that they have to endure. So all of this is doing what? It's, well, it's, it's creating a form of energy motion, but what does it serve? Well, at the end of the day, it's certainly not serving life. It's serving something. It's not serving life. After a concert of Elvis, you as a person haven't grown. You as a person haven't healed. You as a person hasn't, have not discovered yourself at a deeper level and become more humble and more connected to life itself and become a better servant. It hasn't done that. So what's it doing? It's entertaining the disease. That's all I'm trying to say. And in the world of the mammoth, the disease, well, the more you serve the disease, the more that system from that control by that Luciferian mind will give you toys, external markers of success that will give the impression to the others that you're superior. Well, in a way, kind of, sort of, because you're serving at a greater level the system. But from the, the, the paradigm of life, it's, a, it's all a lie. You've just hustled the system. You've used the system to your advantage to squish the others. The others are not victims in my book. I said at the end of the day, they're all slaves. So they're playing. This is Jay-Z for me, the Jay-Z mentality. I don't believe that Jay-Z for a minute is a moron. You don't come from where you come unless you're clear, clear and achieve what you, unless you're clear. Well, no, this is a, it's a rigged system. So if I'm going to be in, in a, if I'm going to be a slave, why don't I put myself in the best position? And I have the capacity to play that game, which is greed, ego, anger, and lust, and whatever it is that I forgot right now. Right? I can play that game and win. Apparently that's what life is about. 
I don't know if Jay-Z knows this or something else. It's not for me to judge. I don't care. But it's like, well, if that's what life is about, because that's all we see, isn't it? If that's what life is about, why should I live like shit when I can be, quote unquote, at the top? I'm still a slave, but might as well live a, quote unquote, good life and that my children have the very best of everything and not have to struggle. But we're still slaves. So from a paradigm of life, this is slavery. Within that system, there's an illusion, and the illusion is that they're superior, they're like gods, and you are shit, and you aspire one day like a crab to get out of the, to crawl out and become like them. How did you, they get there? Well, clearly, they, de they decided to serve the system, and you can only serve the system. Well, everybody serves the system, but they decided to devote themselves completely and totally to the system, and that means to give themselves to the energy, greed, anger, ego, attachment, and lust. And those who achieve the higher, highest level, well, how, how does Coca-Cola become Coca-Cola? Because it's completely dedicated to greed. It doesn't care. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't care that it has to destroy because it, does, it doesn't think like this. It's like, I'm going to take everything. And I'm going to cheat, lie, deceive, trick. Why shouldn't I? You can't stop me. So those who decide to engage in this will achieve this, and then they will squish the others, uh, everything underneath. But they're playing the game together. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And what I'm trying to say is that most people think that that's the end all and be all of life. There's nothing else. And what I'm trying to share is like, no, I'm here to help achieve the sermon. I'm like, no, there's a whole other system. It's just that for the time being, that system is for the most part dormant. Why? It's another question. I've spoken about it in other videos, and we'll talk about it later. It's, it's dormant. It's, it's, it's like in its winter phase. But there's something else. This is disease. All it leads is to suffering, disease, and death. And there's nobody who comes out of this alive. So, all this is beautiful food for thought. It requires a little bit of contemplation. It's pretty obvious. This is not hard to understand, but you have to have a, be a patient, a little calm, and not like so overexcited, and just observe. And you'll clearly see it. Not that the fact that you see it doesn't change the situation, but the fact that you see it makes you start to realize that there may be an, uh, an alternative, and you may decide that you want to dedicate yourself to that alternative, in which case you'll have to work really hard because that mind has full fully has total grasp on us at this stage. It is our deity. You can pretend that you love Jesus, that you love Muhammad, peace be upon him and Allah. You can pretend that you're, you're serving Krishna. This is between me and you, a load of shit for the most part. No, no, you're under the jurisdiction of that mind. That's why it doesn't care what you worship. Because at the end of the day, what you really worship is it. Except it's it in the form of Krishna, it in the form of Muhammad and Allah, it in the form of Jesus or whatever deity flows your boat. It doesn't matter because that mind supersedes everything else. But it's, well, it's subtle, but not so subtle. It says so in the Bible. It's very clear. <laughs> the Bible is a, is a very special book. But even though it says it, it changes nothing. Right? But it can enlighten you. It's like, I'm not the first person to say that. It says so in the Bible. Right? But the fact that you know that doesn't change, that that mind has dominion over you. You cannot just say, I want not to be part of it. And that mind is not evil, it's fulfilling a function. And that's why I say it, it comes back to, well, there's a, something happened. And from that point on, that mind has to kick in in order to prevent your death, your demise, the demise of the human, human species. Now, what that is, in the Genesis, they call it the original sin. I don't like that word. I say the primary lesion is irrelevant. Why that exists, it's, it, comes, it fits in a greater context, but nevertheless. So now you're under the jurisdiction of that tear. And that's one mind. So it doesn't matter what deity you pretend to worship. This is the system you live in and you believe in it. You can't help yourself. Now some people find some kind of balance and say, listen, I'm good with this. I don't need more. But deep inside, if you could look into their unconscious, I'm sure that you would find different, different, different reality. And they may say, okay, I'm good with this, but they'll transmit that lust, greed, ego attachment, and want for more to their children. Right? My father achieves a certain level of success. He's like, well, he, can he get more? Not really. So, but of course he wants more.
because everybody wants more power because they want to achieve more security. And that's, in that system, security comes with quote-unquote money. And no matter how much you have, if you don't have more, you're always insecure. That's what that system is designed. It's based on scarcity. Now, how you achieve more money is the system itself requires you to suck and squish other people and take from them their resources. That's, the, that's how the system is designed. Now, people may not know this. They may not want to know this. You don't have to look very far to understand. Just look at how money works. <laughs> okay? And if money rules the world, so then look at how it's organized itself. It's organized by sucking and taking. So the point is, you, your father may have achieved a certain level and feel quote-unquote comfortable. In you, there's the lust for more because it, there's a need for more security, more power, more influence, more separated from death and trying to gravitate and get to the higher uh, echelon where you're, you, you, become, you have access to infinite resource. So it's transmitted to you as a, as a progeny, and then there you go, you're like, something's uh, taking over me. And you don't really know what it is. Anyways. 